Uh, hi, um, my name is uh, Clodagh Walsh and I'm an Associate Research Software Engineer with the uh, Irish Research Interest Group and uh, I'll be presenting on uh, one of the projects I'm working on, Encode, which is a project funded by the Horizon Europe Research uh, Project Fund and we aim to create a programming platform for uh, deployments on edge and IoT environments. So for some background, Red Hat are involved in many of these um, Horizon Europe projects. So the EU gives out uh, funding for research and innovation projects and most of the projects that Red Hat work on are involved with the cloud and the edge and IoT devices. So there are many different challenges involved with deploying applications on a distributed and heterogeneous environment. Um, so some of these include managing the resources. So you could have the network fabric, the IoT devices themselves, maybe uh, 5G slices, and coordinating these can be difficult. Then also onboarding the IoT devices themselves, because there's such a wide range of IoT devices out there. Then the actual deployment of the application itself, um, often you would have microservices, you have multiple different components to your application, and then managing the upgrading of these applications as well also adds to the complexity. So Encode offers these five key features to help overcome these challenges. The first one being the developer platform. It is a um, <coughs> cloud-native developer platform, so for deploying applications in that way. There is a unified orchestrator. It brings together the orchestrators for the different territories. So you'd have Kubernetes as the orchestrator for the cloud resources, a network operator for the networking functions, and uh, 5G and uh, RAN operators as well for those components. Then you have the unified network fabric, and this is made up of all the different networking devices that I just mentioned. Then we have device verification. This makes sure that IoT devices are onboard onto the platform once you know that they're safe and they're your ones. So um, you would look at using device attestation to do this. So you look at the hardware and firmware properties of the device. So for example, you would look to see if the MAC address of like a Raspberry Pi matches what you expect it to be. And then finally, you have role-based access control. There are multiple different stakeholders that are using this system. You have the application developers, operations support teams, and the infrastructure team. And you want them to be able to access the private systems that they are supposed to. So we do this through role-based access. Then the developer platform is made using the backstage project, uh, the open source project, to create the different views. We have a built-in CI/CD pipeline which helps manage the deployment applications, but also helps you to scale your application as well. So you can integrate with the Kubernetes orchestrator to scale up your application, or also you can use the network orchestration to uh, get a bigger 5G slice, for example. There is a centralized telemetry dashboard which gives you an overview of the telemetry applications from all the different parts, so for the network and the cloud and the IoT devices themselves. And then you have a graphical view of all the different components to give you a sense of like what is actually involved in your application. The telemetry then is used, uses many different microservices to gather all the different metrics it needs. So we have um, the cloud network and IoT metrics. The cloud metrics are scraped using Prometheus, which is the built-in operator in OpenShift itself. There is um, the network, which are gathered using the standard endpoints that the network controllers expose. And then we have the Firework Context Broker, which is one of our partners, and they get the application. They get the metrics from the different IoT devices. The architecture of Encode is seen as a horizontal layering approach. There are three different layers. We have the service management layer, resource management layer, and the infrastructure layer. Um, so the service layer talks to the resource management layer, which in turn talks to the infrastructure layer and this helps managing access and the flow through the system. The physical layer then is made up of all the physical devices. Um, so we have a core cloud, which then connects to the different edge, cl edge cloud sites, and these can be registered um, as necessary. These have a set of microservices running on them to keep an inventory of what you have available there. So you want to know what IoT devices, sensors, Raspberry Pis, or like special edge processing nodes that you have available there. And then these are available in the central pool of resources. So when the developer finishes writing the application, they can use any of these physical resources to deploy. <coughs> Here we have a workflow of how the whole system would run. So the service layer manages the service life lifecycle. And this is done using Maestro, which is a service orchestrator. Um, so when you finish writing the application, you have a deployment request that is uh, sent to the resource manager. It looks at what resources you need. Then it goes to the infrastructure layer and it collects them together and it makes an end-to-end -end slice of all the resources you need and the application then is deployed across them. 
There's many different components to the resource management layer. We have the scheduler, resource manager, distributed storage, and the controllers and drivers for the various different territories involved. The key to all of this is OpenSlice. It is an operation support system, and it's used by many different telco companies to manage their networks. There is a catalog in OpenSlice, which um, has all the different offerings available. So you have an offering for the networking functions, de uh, deploying a 5G slice, uh, 5 RAN slice, or um, you also have created one for deploying OpenShift. <coughs> the scheduler is interesting because it is a meta scheduler. As I mentioned before, there's different edge clouds, so we need to decide which of these cloud sites to deploy to and then which node on those. The scheduler then is aware of any uh, special hardware that's there, so the IoT devices and any GPUs that might be available. Um, it's developed like any other normal scheduler would be. It looks at labels and annotations to decide where's the most optimal place to um, put the workload. Um, so Incode can be used to develop applications in many different industries, uh, logistics and transport, utilities inspection, smart factories, uh, public protection, and disaster relief as well. So we have an example here of how you would register an edge uh, site to the platform. So first you would have a factory and you'd install a 5G network here. It would then become registered with a core cloud. Then you have edge processing nodes in this facility that register themselves with the central infrastructure rule. Then you have workers entering the facility which have IoT devices on their, so they might have some sensors or um, their phones or whatever else. And these also then become added to the infrastructure pool. Finally, you deploy the applications. You might have a database to keep all the censored, the data from the sensors. You might have some AI models running on the devices themselves, uh, some message buses to um, keep track of all the different events that are happening as well. So in more detail, we have uh, application of using an exoskeleton to measure an operator health at the manufacturing facility. So an operator could wear an exoskeleton and some sensors to measure muscle fatigue. Once they're mes once the fatigue uh, exceeds a certain threshold, the uh, exoskeleton kicks into a higher support state to offer some relief to the worker, and they can then, as you can see, carry out more work and more safely. Then once this has returned back to a safe level, the exoskeleton will return back to a normal support state, uh, allowing the worker to continue on. The second use case would be um, for search and rescue operations, where you have a UAV and unmanned aerial vehicle and a UGV, an unmanned ground vehicle, collaborating together to help find the person uh, missing or in distress. <coughs> so using these two robot devices together has become quite popular in the subterranean challenge run by DARPA, the Defense Advanced Project Research Agency. They do this and they were able to achieve better simultaneous localization and mapping um, to get a better view of the environment from both above and like on the ground. So the drone takes aerial footage and it sends it to the robotic dog on the ground to help locate the missing person. So we have an AI model that's running on the edge devices, message bus to receive these messages and send the GPS coordinates, and another microservice for um, the route planning to get to the person. Um, so finally, our contribution to this project, we are working on the scheduler resource manager and distributed storage in the resource manager layer. We are creating OpenShift as a service in the OpenSlice catalog. We deployed several OpenShift clusters, both on vSphere and on OpenStack, and we're also involved in the telemetry and resource time and runtime orchestration components. Uh, finally, we have a list of our partners that are part of the consortium helping us to create this project. And finally, we have some links here to the project as we're still only halfway through, so to keep up to date what's happening. And um, if any questions, uh, feel free to ask. Thanks. <coughs>